Thank you for tuning in to This Automation Life, brought to you by Brenner Fiedler. I am your host, Jeremy Schubert. Each week, we discuss technologies used in automation. This week, Paul Oppenheim, sensor specialist with Brenner Fiedler, is here to discuss proximity sensors. Thanks for joining us today, Paul. Good to be here, Jeremy. Thank you. So, Paul, when we say a proximity sensor, or when people are talking about a proximity sensor, what are they talking about? Okay, so... Uh, essentially, when they're mentioning the word proximity, they're meaning some, a target that is in close proximity to the sensor itself. Okay. So if you are going to be needing to sense a target that's going to be fairly close to your sensor, a proximity sensor is what you're going to be needing to use. Okay. Very nice and straightforward that's and simple. Very that's straightforward. That's that it. rarely happens. That's so, it. <laughs> so what, are there types of proximity sensors? Uh, or uh... Absolutely. Although uh, a lot of people use the term proximity sensor very loosely. They might even just say, hey, I need some proxies. Uh, generally, when they are referring to the, the true sense of the word proximity sensor, they're referring to one of two sensors being either a capacitive or an inductive type prox. Okay. So, of course, my inquisitive mind wants to know now, what's the difference between a capacitive and inductive? Very good question. Okay. So, we'll start with an inductive sensor, and uh, or an inductive proximity sensor is one that detects metal targets only. So, okay. it will only see metal targets. Uh, as opposed to non-metal, like plastic, paper, you know, whatever the case might be, wood. Okay, so a capacitive right? sensor, we could even detect wood if we were to cutting a 2 by 4 or something. A, a capacitive sensor could yeah. detect wood, okay. but like an inductive sensor would not. Exactly. Would not see that wood, so, but would see metal. Right, so okay. so like, so like again, an inductive sensor is something that's seeing metal only, whereas a capacitive sensor, as you probably kind of surmise, we can pretty much detect anything in close proximity to it. Oh, okay. So in addition to metal, it can see wood, plastic, you know, some, some paper if it's thick enough and whatnot. Interesting. So, so okay, so how does an inductive sensor work? How does it detect metal? Okay, so when you have an inductive sensor, essentially you have a, a circuit which consists primarily of an oscillator. So you have um, a voltage that's being sent across a coil and it's kind of like flip-flopping back and forth. And in doing so, it creates a magnetic field. Now, when a piece of metal comes in fairly close proximity to that sensor, it starts to collapse the field and induces what's called an eddy current. Then there's a circuit inside that uh, inductive proximity sensor that will then detect that eddy current and say, ah, the field's collapsed, and now send a signal saying there is metal present, basically. Okay. Now, that would not happen, obviously, with you know, paper or water or something that would not be of that nature because it would not collapse. I gotcha. Right. So not only is it great at detecting metal, it's also great at ignoring things that are not metal. Exactly. I right. see. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, I got another question based on that. What about uh, what about metals like aluminum or copper? Are those detectable or is it, how's this Absolutely, work? yeah. And it kind of depends on the type of proximity sensor. Now, the, the general proximity sensors, when you're working with a magnetic field with magnetism, you think of something that a magnet would stick to, primarily iron or what we call ferrous material. Okay. Okay. Yep. But there are specially designed ones that will create different fields that can be sensitive to metals, uh, different types. So we have like all purpose metal sensors. We also okay. have ones that say like you want to be able to sense an iron target, but not sense an aluminum target. Sure. So you don't want yeah. to distinguish between the two. Yeah. Uh, or other metals have better. Uh, you can come across applications where someone wanted to be able to sense the difference between, let's say, like silver versus a stainless steel or something. Right? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. And so uh, then this this leaves us out hanging here. What's what? How does the capacitor work? How does this thing okay. detect wood and water and paper? This right. Gotcha. Okay. So the capacitor is a little bit different because what you have now is you have voltage that's being applied to uh, essentially a capacitor. Now imagine a if you could. Vision this probably the best way to simplify the circuit is if you could think of a, a, a capacitor which is normally a, an element which holds a charge but imagine if you will slicing it in half so you're only charging one of the plates okay. now the other plate would be technically the target itself or something okay. that has a, de a, a certain amount of density to be able to handle a charge so I'm picturing so, the the schematic symbol of capacitor where you've got the right line space line right we're cutting it inside that space yes so okay. basically like that is probably the best ways I can probably describe this and then you are that other plate or the target is the other plate so okay. now if it's a very thin piece of material that would only be seen of as as a dielectric which falls in between the two plates it won't recognize it okay so if you have like a like a sheet of paper towel it might not see that but if you have several sheets or or whatever, something that could possibly introduce a, a, a static charge or hold a possible charge or something, if it has enough density to it, it will detect that and say, ah, there's definitely something there. Okay, I got you. So uh, for anybody who doesn't know a capacitor, you've got basically uh, two charged plates 
space by an insulator. It's called a dielectric. And so this sensor works by essentially detecting the change in that dielectric, I guess, or the change of the charge much, on the other yeah, side. Yeah, it's almost like you're, it's a, it's, okay. a, it's a it's a do it yourself capacitor, if you okay. will, and it and, that, and that voltage is always present, and no one sees that. Like, oh, okay, now there's so many microfarads or picofarads that are starting to build up. It's, okay. it's a very small change that, that the internal circuit can see that change. It's like, ah, there's something present there. Interesting. Yeah. So, how is this useful? I mean, okay. I mean, obviously, you can detect weird things that a, an inductive sensor couldn't. But... Sure. So let's kind of go back to the inductive sensor and let's think of some applications where that would be uh, more appropriate over okay. other sensors. So. If you're looking at an inductive sensor, uh, one example would be if you want to sense metal behind something that's non-metal. Okay. Um, now, in a previous podcast, we talked about photoelectric sensors. Yeah. And especially right. if you're talking about, let's say, a reflective photoelectric sensor with a transmitter receiver or just built into the, the, the same housing and just be sending light out and whatever it hits bounces back. Right. Well, you can never be able to sense, let's say, metal behind paper because it only sees the paper, so to speak. Okay. So whether the metal's there or not there, it still thinks, it just sees the paper. Okay. So in that regard, a photoelectric sensor would not be appropriate, but a proximity sensor would okay. because it's only sensing that metal. Uh, other examples where proximity sensors are uh, cleverly used are in applications that are prone to a lot of dust buildup, oil, uh, gotcha. A lot of debris that might be inside of a about. CNC machine or something, sure, absolutely, okay. uh, or just uh, or food, let's say, uh, mm. sugar, flour, something where you want to be where you don't it does it doesn't harm the sensor so much, or rather, more importantly, impair its ability to sense something. Mm. If it's got non-metallic stuff caked on it, it okay. will still see through that, for lack of a better term, because it's only looking for metal. Okay, so now I'm thinking a step ahead and, and thinking of like this bakery where there's flour everywhere and building up right. on the sensor. Mm -hmm. That's not going to, the, the inductive sensor is not going to see that. It's still only right. going to see the metal, but exactly. maybe the capacitive would have an issue with this. It, exactly. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, because so that, it, it's so is there anywhere else that maybe a capacitive is an interesting application? As opposed to using a metal As one. opposed to like an inductive, yeah, absolutely. or a photo eye even. Why sure, absolutely. It? Since I kind of mentioned we were talking about, let's say, uh, if we're looking at maybe the density of a target now, uh, getting back into the concept of a capacitor holding a charge, uh, capacitive sensors are great if you need to see through, let's say, um, a, a fairly less dense material, let's say, like give a thin piece of glass or plastic, and you want to see water behind that. Yeah, let's say I okay. wanted to look inside a uh, plastic bottle and know if there was detergent in it or not. Absolutely. Do I need sensor. to go buy detergent on the way home? Right. <laughs> Can I install a capacitive sensor at home for this? <laughs> you probably could. If okay. you had that kind of time on your hands, sure, why not? <laughs> I, I, I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Most of us don't, but gosh, wouldn't that be... Uh, <laughs> That'd be nice yeah, that, to know. Sure, why not? Do I have enough? Absolutely. Right. So maybe uh, more of an of an, of an, of an industry where, uh, again, maybe a photoelectric sensor would not work if you're looking through like a, uh, a sight tube or the, a sight mount of a glass or something like that. You want to okay. look to see if there's a chemical inside of a vat. And the vat itself, it might not have any uh, glass or sight tube, but it might be made of plastic. Okay. okay. And it could then see through that plastic and then see the density of the liquid bottle okay. behind that. And, we're, right. and you're using the word see very like... Right. As a, just a description. I should say detect presence yeah. of, okay. rather. Okay. Right. So like a see, photo, yeah. I wouldn't be able to see through that or detect through that. It's just going to it's detect gonna, the, the plastic. The first thing it hit, right, which right. is the plastic okay. itself. You got it. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Okay. I gotcha. So um, any other interesting things to know about these? Is there a typical size or shape for uh, an proximity in, or, or either its type? Um, um, yeah, generally proximity sensors are what we call a typical barrel shape. Okay, uh, yeah. A lot of them I've can be uh, as small as maybe about 5 millimeters in diameter, some as large as maybe 30 millimeters, a little over uh, an inch or so in diameter. Okay. Um, again, they don't, uh, again, for, for their large size, they don't have that much of a detecting distance. Again, why we're talking about proximity sensor, but they do have their applications. And okay. They're very specific for... I gotcha. And I would imagine that the normal things we've talked about in terms of an NPN or PNP type output, um, I think that we've talked about normally closed versus normally open when we did the relays. Right. So reference past podcasts for more information about this type of uh, output characteristics. So cool. Well, I think that's all the time we have this week. Paul, thank you very much for joining us again. It's good, right? good to be here again, then, Jeremy. Glad right. to help out. And thanks, everybody, for listening to Brenner Fiedler's This Automation Life. If you have questions about what you just heard or if you have a, a topic that you'd like to hear discussed, please email us at tech, that's T-E-C-H, 
at brfa.com. And continue, uh, be sure to continue tuning in each week. We have more exciting upcoming episodes. 